I'm Jack Jackie Gustin. I'm your current Arts Council President. It's nice to have you all here today. Our guest artist hails from Seattle, where he lived for 30 years, and he's been here in TRC since 2021. He studied music and dance at the Naropa Institute in Boulder, Colorado. Give a big TRC welcome for artist Constantine Parvulescu. There's no N in Costi. Uh, I love it here in TRC. And uh, I'm a multidisciplinary artist. Um, started life as a photographer, graduated to music, and then started doing other stuff. We'll see a bunch of it here. Um, I think multidisciplinary is Latin for ADHD, but I'm not sure. And uh, I guess I'll just start. This is one of my aspects. This is um, obviously immediately post-COVID, I mean, pre, just after COVID started. Um, the mask I'm wearing is a plague doctor mask by my dear friend, Ryan Kuzer. Um, I'm gonna be probably, if I can see him, I guess. Um, this is how I felt. Like, I was very happy um, sitting at home. <laughs> Not talking to you. Um, I get a lot of my inspiration from my grandparent, my grandfather and my dad. This is from my grandfather's book, um, on Copernicus, he was an astronomer. Um, the place of man in the cosmos is right here. This is material plane. This is the, mic the known microcosmos, the unknown, uh, the knowable microcosmos, and the rest of the microcosmos, or macrocosmos, and the microcosmos is over there. Uh, planets, neutrons, whenever they were discovered, and then sigma for the unknown. So solve for sigma, and we can solve all sorts of answers. Um, I think of that as the axis mundi, sort of the central place where the universe revolves around in, in all of its um, many dimensions. And so that's kind of an inspiration for me. You'll see some work that's related to this in a, in a bit. Um, this is my dad. Time reversal, time marches backwards. Um, reversing time has been a compelling idea for ages. Today we can perform time reversal. Parvulescu and Clay's experiment was the first demonstration of time reversal. All he did was flip an audio tape backwards and play it on top of the forward. Put it forward. That was you, not No, my dad. Oh, yeah. Uh, I like to think of it again as a metaphor, time reversing time just has all sorts of cosmic possibilities. Um, that again is another um, sort of inspiration in the back of my being. And these are some of my instruments and sculptures. This is a, a bass bow made out of bloodwood. Um, that's a commercial frogging button. I didn't make that, but I did make the stick and wrap the wrap the leather and wrapping. This is a ebony, um, snakewood, Baroque-style vine bow with garnets. And the frog and mutton, which I did make, uh, out of um, water rose, which is a, I believe it's a South American rose, but I'm not sure, but not Brazil. Oops, come back. <coughs> this is the Chris Abadjian Memorial Percussion Kit. Um, there's a long story behind it, but I, my violin teacher sort of set me on this path, um, not because he didn't like my violin playing, but because he liked my percussion. <laughs> uh, I have three years, three and a half years of uh, rhythmic vocals um, in college, so that's kind of where I went off with that. I played, played in his band with this for a, few, for a little bit. Uh, this is the Panthrastic Harp Sitter, um, created in collaboration with the Degenerate Art Ensemble in Seattle. Um, if this is in the permanent collection at the Fry Museum, but they collected it because of the de Degenerate Art Ensemble, not because of me. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, they, yeah, it's a, they, 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 that's not mine, but they had a, they've used this on stage multiple times. I think they broke it multiple times too. Um, this is a bull roarer, which I have and I can demonstrate outside afterwards. It's an outdoor instrument. Um, if you've seen uh, Crocodile Dundee, I think there's a scene, yeah. 
with one of these. I was working with a dance company, an aerial dance company, in fact, um, in Seattle, and uh, they set a lot of their pieces in Neolithic Anatolia. So I was trying to design instruments and sounds that were reminiscent of pre-modern sorts of things. What's really fun about this is if you get in the front of the stage and wing it over the audience. <laughs> I mean, if you, as long as you don't hit them. This is called Cat and Nine Tails. It's a um, little hard to see, perhaps. Uh, Do not touch. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this was my response to some of the shenanigans in Iraq in 2003. Um, it's actually totally safe to touch. This was going to be a 5 8 bass, but I abandoned it. Um, 5 8 upright bass. And music. We were going to do a video, but the video didn't work, so I'm going to play something right now. This is called a Tilinka. It's a comic of both Hungarian and Romanian Transylvania. You've heard of Transylvania, I'm sure. Um, the tune, I'm gonna, it's ancient, it's, it's, this one isn't, but it's an ancient instrument, obviously. Um, uh, the tune I'm going to play is recognizable to all of you, but you might not recognize it because it's a tune and you'll see what I mean in a moment. Um, I'm going to play some variations on it. If you do recognize it, let me know. I'm curious to see who, who can tell. And also, this is not my first instrument, and I'm really out of shape. I'm out of practice, <laughs> so bear with me. So it only gets certain, you can only get certain pitches. So that was going to be the video. Okay, then uh, I was a street photographer in high school, and this is some of the street photography, and I hope it shows up to you, because it's old. This is all, okay, well, we'll come back here. And portraits. This is photobombing and um, cosplay before it was cool. Where is that one? Transylvania. Ah, home. Uh, yeah, actually. <laughs> well, sort of. Oh, 
So yeah, I grew up in Hollywood. I should say that. The Romanian Revolution was just, I didn't, wasn't there for the festivities, but four months later they were protesting in the, in the University Square in front of the National Theater, with the National Theater. <laughs> These are landscapes, kind of. <laughs> What's PNW? Pacific Northwest. Oh, geez, thanks. I'm glad you asked. You see in the southwest. I know where it is. It's Cuchillo. This is where I am now. Oh, nice. In the bar? <laughs> well, the bar is not working. This is what it looks like now. Right. <laughs> May I ask, are you manipulating these in Photoshop? Uh, I don't use Photoshop um, because I'm cheap, lazy, and contrarian. Yeah. Um, I use uh, Photoscape X, which is the free Mac program. Some of them are manipulated. Um, most, I mean, yes, I, but some of them are less manipulated. So a lot yeah. of them are Look at you. Thank you. Very wonderful. Thank you. Find out the focus and uh, maybe boost the colors a little bit. Yeah, that's a lot of these were taken uh, during the fires last summer, mm -hmm. as you can see. Oops, come back here. Hey, ah. In general, but not always, the square pictures of film and the, the rectangles are digital, but not always. Because sometimes they crop the digital into rectangles. I mean, into square. And this is heavily manipulated. <laughs> <laughs> The atmosphere on this planet was ridiculous. I have another question. Okay. <laughs> in your gallery, you yeah. have a little Polaroid. Yes. 
are these, are these, because it's big, they look beautiful big. Uh, I don't have any Polaroids in this slideshow. Um, okay. But Polaroids, I mean, yeah, Polaroids are square. Yeah. And they're small. Okay. And I don't think, I'm not sure how they would survive enlarging heavily. But they might, I don't know, we try. But those are all originals. Yes, ask questions, because yeah. I don't have much to say. So, for instance, with this one, if these are heavily manipulated, can you speak to the manipulation as you remember, like for this one? This one, so there's a uh, function where you can turn a, picture, a positive image into a negative image. So I just did that, um, so which reverses the colors. And the color theory people would know more about that than I do. Um, and then I. I think that's all I did with this, and then just probably saturate, just crank the saturation knob up to 100 or 91 or something. Yeah, it's very much aware of the positive and negative, and we can do that on our cell phones too, which right. is really interesting. Yeah, some of these are negatives, uh, and some of them aren't, but most of them, I mean, all of them are just crank the, crank the sliders. <laughs> so I have another question. Yes. Please. I'm looking at your computer as opposed to, mm -hmm. which one is more like the, the photo? The, it's darker on the, more it's, contrast. I like it dark. That's a little contrastier than I thought it was, I mean, than I planned it. Um, Every computer, every screen, every thing yeah, is going to be different. Yeah. So, yeah, I, that's, that's the thing I've totally really figured done. out exactly how to do is how to doing the day. How to master a photograph so that it looks similar on every yes. situation. I'm not even sure how to do that. But there might be. Starbase X3A. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the atmosphere and that is ridiculous. This is film. Wow. Or a scan of a film. I saw lightning flashes. I didn't have a tripod. I climbed on top of my car and tried to get the camera to stay in one place. Um, it wasn't lightning flashes. It was that. And that's white sand. So I'm, I'm not sure if I'm oh, on somebody's okay. list now or not. But <laughs> I'm not sure I was supposed, anybody was supposed to see that. I'm, I'm a big, partly, I mean, I'm, I'm an advocate of dark sky. Um, dark skies and trying to keep light pollution down and um, I'm hope, one of my goals for my gallery is to try and get the dark sky people interested in showing or having lectures or introducing dark skies to tier C. Um, I know New Mexico has a program, I think tier C might have a program. The idea is to keep light pollution lights pointing downwards and not upwards so that people can see the stars like these coming from Seattle. Stars are magnificent. Something new. Magnificent. Yeah. What the? Something new. What is this? That's a planetary conjunction. Don't ask me which ones because I don't remember. My grandfather's rolling over in his grave. It's my backyard. Look at that dam here. from the casitas at the, at the dam. There's a store up there, you can't see it. It's right above there. A bit. Oh, wait. 
This was the summer, the solstice in, I mean, the, um, the eclipse in 2017. I didn't head south from Seattle, I headed north for some stupid reason, but uh, Whidbey Island, there's a place on Whidbey Island called um, Earth Sanctuary. It's like 60 or 70 acres of, we're trying to re regrow it, old growth and stuff. And there's a, there's some, some standing stones, like yeah. 15 feet high standing stones. And this is them. just not the World Trade Center. <coughs> and this was about the moment of the eclipse, but it wasn't very, um, wasn't very uh, occluded up in the sea, up in the Island. You had to go south. Is that where you took it? Where you? Yeah. This is Port Townsend mm -hmm. in, in Washington. Oh, here we go. This is, so this is kind of my <coughs> nod to, towards my grandfather who may turn away. <laughs> Uh, this is a series I started to develop in 2009 and kind of ongoing, but not, um, not completely. And then you can just read that as poetry if you want. <laughs> it may or may not actually mean anything. It reads like it means must mean something. <laughs> 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 Impressive. <laughs> you keep reading, we'll figure it out, right? Do mm -hmm. mm -hmm. this. Nice. How to do that? Um, this incident reflected the refracted light. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Anytime. What I was purposely looking for was accidents and happenstance and synchronicities. So yes, <laughs> not always. It's, I mean, it's, it's a hit, very hit or miss, very miss or, and possibly hit <laughs> process. Um, yeah, these are all uh, in camera. I have no idea what's going to happen. I mean, what it's going to look like. Um, that's with a flashlight, basically. So it's light painting of a sort. Um, but I'm looking for things that look like they come from other dimensions, which is the angular and exosomatic part. Numenon is the opposite of phenomenon. Phenomenon are things that we that exist. Numenon are things. Numina are things that may or that don't exist, but we can think of. Okay. Thank you. Ooh, oh she. <coughs> Tell us about that one. Yeah. Uh, that's out my bedroom window in Seattle. Um, what was my bedroom window in Seattle? Uh, I mean, if you want a, my opinion, it looks to me like a, 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 a con an airplane contrail breaking up in the sunset. But, yeah. Does it look like a hand reaching down to that tree? Ooh, that's true. I was thinking burning bush, but. <laughs> but yes, a hand works too. Mm -hmm. um, I will. I would. I can prove it with the uh, metadata. This was winter solstice, 2010. Super moon, full moon, super full moon, winter solstice, 2010. This is a little Romanian quartet I, I formed. Um, there's a style of a music called Musica Lutariasca, which is extraordinarily difficult to play, which I tried to play for 30 years and never really succeeded. But uh, this was my our attempt.
Here is mentioned America, Doom America not again. This is my teacher and I, um, me attempting to follow him. And uh, this is Musico Italiasco, he's, he's a master of it. And I'm hanging on for dear life. <laughs> <laughs> Quite literally. Looks <laughs> <laughs> fast. It, it was, yes. yes. <laughs> it was that. <laughs> Uh, I was, my band worked with this director who made the play the Dr. Mask from the beginning. Um, he did a show called um, Dracula, a case study, which was set 10 years after the, the book in uh, Seward's um, asylum. And I got to be Renfield in a straitjacket, <laughs> which was extraordinarily fun. <laughs> We were a three-piece on stage orchestra in, in costume. And, oh, he's a puppet. It was puppets. So the, the, the conceit was that everybody in the asylum was doing puppet therapy. And, uh, you know, so we would come out with these puppets. And then Renfield's puppets were, of course, super creepy. <laughs> the, he, Brian Kuzer did not make Renfield's puppets. Renfield's puppets were made by a different Brian. He used my wisdom teeth in one. Um, I, he used, I think, like lint or fur that he found or something. It was, yeah, it was nuts. And this is my gallery. Lunatica's gallery, because I can't come up with a normal name to save my life. <laughs> I'm eventually going to paint that with black part at some point, someday, maybe. <laughs> And this is the show that just came down half an hour ago. There's the drum kit. I think somebody would be in there. Questions happily fielded. Yes. I wonder if you take pictures of different objects because they are visually interesting or have interesting shapes by themselves, or perhaps they resemble something not. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and let me just, because it may be absolutely subjective, <clears throat> uh, I just thought that it looks more like the, the Greek sculpture Nika Samotraki. Oh. Yeah. This is with this <coughs> one piece that looked like a wing. This is why I'm asking this question. So the, the armless Nikos? The armless yeah. Nika. 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 Yes, sure. Great. I love it. Yeah. I mean, you know how art works. You put something out and people think what they think, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's great. Love it. Now, see, I would have suggested that your eye is wide, what you see, and that you don't hone in so much, because they all seem so expansive. You mean because there's so many different subjects, kind of, or? No. No. I mean, you have, like, a subject, but it, it's not the actual one focal, I mean, right. the sky, everything, mm -hmm. it's very, it's like not a, a picture of the sun. A skyscape, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. landscape, mm -hmm. skyscape, not a thing. Like we're seeing a whole surround to that mm -hmm. sign. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah, as, so a, just this as important as the sun. Negative space. Yes. yes. Oh, it doesn't look yes. so negative. <laughs> <laughs> it's as important. But <laughs> I'm a very positive person, I'm positive, isn't it? <laughs> I'm positive we're going to help. Yes, sir. Costa, you haven't uh, touched on your art of vocalization. Would you like to? Um, I can. So, in I went to Naropa, which is a, it was a tiny liberal arts college. It's still a tiny liberal arts college, but I don't think they have as much arts anymore. It's mostly 
Buddhism and psychology and psychotherapy and stuff. Uh, and the director of the music program, he had a thing he was calling at the time rock etudes, and he's calling them now vocal, rhythmic vocal etudes. And he would handwrite musical notation on unlined paper with word with the, the lyrics that we were supposed to read, and, like it was impossible to read. But then he would teach it to us by rote. Uh, so we learned it by ear, and we were supposed to read along. Nobody read along, um, and we learned a bunch of pieces. And I am trying to relearn some of them, but I am certain I'm mashing them up. Um, but for example, something would like that would go like this. Uh, and I, the part I don't remember is where the pulse is. So, uh, he wrote that down. We never, nobody could read it. <laughs> He's since then printed it on music manuscript paper, which I haven't, I have owned but haven't looked at because why? Yeah, you already know. So uh, I was, in fact, um, started to try and do rhythmic vocal classes. And if anybody's interested, I could get, I could work that up again. Um, maybe learning some of those pieces, or maybe just getting rhythms and vocals into your body. Which is just well, I was going to ask something yes. because Jagger mentioned a dance. Did you study dance? The name of the department was movement studies. Oh, really? to me, dance is feet. My feet are to this day stupid, so I don't call it dance, I call it movement studies. I, okay. I just say dance as a shorthand, but it, uh, primarily, so I had started, I'd done Hatha yoga before that, got to the school, and they were like, you need, to, you need three, three credits of movement meditation, here's what we got. I said, I'm doing Ashtanga, is that okay? And I said, yeah, that's fine. So I got Ashtanga, and then I did, um, uh, contact improvisation, which is a dance form based on moving bodies, sharing a point of contact, one or more points of contact. So it's not about character, it's not about men and women, it's about physics and momentum and gravity and levity. Um, so you're basically, you can throw people around on your shoulders and, you know, you're rolling on the floor. It can look like foreplay if you... <laughs> uh, and the third thing I was doing was slow flying trapeze. Performed in a company for a little bit. Yeah, it's scary. So, summer. I was in Europa in the, su the summer program in Colorado. The dance. They had a summer workshop in low flying trapeze. He said, "Enter low flying trapeze. I'll take it." Um, he needed. He needed to do a show. So he basically anybody that looked like they didn't bump into things, he brought into the into the company. So they're about yay high off the ground. First time I was on, I was like, ah! I was screaming. By the end of it, I was able to swing around and find my ankles in a circle defined by an 18 foot ceiling. So that was a long time ago. No, don't do that after lunch. Um, <laughs> but then, uh, yeah, so I did. And then his, he left, and his protege called me up three weeks later. Hey, I'm starting a company. You want to hang? I'm like, yes. So I danced with her for a year, and then I had to do it. I was graduating, so I did a music recital. So I ended up out. Okay. And then I, when I moved to Seattle, I looked up the trapeze people and didn't, didn't, I didn't really connect, or I didn't have time or something, I didn't pursue it. But then I started working with the company in 98 um, with the Blue Order and uh, they do the Neolithic and some of their stuff. That's their, that's their jam. So that's my dance um, story. I don't really dance anymore. I strap sometimes at night. That's close to the dream. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.